Hey guys, welcome to this week's Dog Life. I'm Kim Pichotti. And I'm Christina Borders. And we're very glad to have you here. Today we're talking about veterinarian medicine. I can't say that word right. Vet veterinary. 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 Vet vet okay, whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, we're talking about vets. Uh, we're going to basically kind of touch upon a lot of different things, a lot of different things, you know, come up and, you know, how do we pay for things? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, the costs are just tremendous. There's a lot of different things, There's pet insurance out there that you can do. There's some charities out there that can help. So, you know, we've kind of gotten into a little bit of that. You know, the worst thing is you want to do is have to make a bad decision to do something you don't want to do if yeah, you don't have the funds right. to do it. So we, we found some places that can help you um, if your dog is sick. Just kind of little, kind of go over some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, what else? We're going to talk a little bit about some advances in veterinary medicine, technology, things that maybe weren't so available 10 years ago that yeah. are more commonplace now, like, you know, even MRIs for your dog. Right. Even 3D printing. So. Yeah, it's it's really kind of interesting. So Christina did a, a really good piece on a couple different things that we can learn and, and do that way. Um, we're going to make a celebration cake. We had a uh, just a kind of a really just a cake you can make any time a cake you can make for your dog's birthday a cake you can make for your kid's birthday um so we're gonna make that yeah. and oh and then we visited or not visited we kind of did a story on a very special um group and organization the richard lichter foundation and what this gentleman has done is really kind of nothing short of but amazing yes um what all in memory of his dog all in memory of his dog and what he's given the opportunity of some other dogs so Let's take a look at our first step right now, learn a little bit more about vets, and kind of go from there. Finding a veterinarian practice that suits your dog's needs is crucial in the health and well-being of your pup. Oftentimes, pet owners will go on a friend's recommendation. However, there's some additional items you'll want to consider. When you find an animal practice that you like, ask for a tour. During the tour, take notice if the facility is clean, do the animals seem comfortable and safe, is the staff friendly and helpful? It's a good idea to choose an animal hospital that's been accredited by the American Animal Hospital Association. Hospitals that choose to be accredited show they are committed to meeting or exceeding standards in a variety of different areas. There's approximately 900 to be exact. When you've identified the vet you feel might be best for your pet, schedule a checkup or get to know visit. See how the vet handles your pet and observe how your pet reacts. While normal stress and weariness are typical in animals out of their normal element, it's important for pets and vets to be able to get along enough to perform a basic exam. Recently, many vets are becoming part of the fear-free veterinary program. Many practices will have their staff take additional education to learn how to make your pet feel more secure when going to the vet. Fear-free helps professionals deliver better care to their patients by looking after the physical and emotional well-being. Some dogs, no matter how much you prepare, are still extremely nervous to go to the vet. A growing number of pet owners are turning to mobile vets or vets on wheels to care for their furry family members. Mobile vet clinics can be an ideal solution for families with pets who are shy or scared or maybe skittish, elderly, large breed dogs, or even dogs that are aggressive. Another option are many online veterinarian websites. Doing research to make sure that that website is credible is critical, as not all sites are equal. You will always want to make sure that you know where your emergency veterinarian is located and have their number on hand, because dogs are like children and sometimes we never know what they're going to get into or find.
Today we are making a wonderful celebration cake that's healthy. Everyone in the family can share it, even the dog. So this way, who needs a special day or a celebration? Because every day should be a celebration. We've got our bananas all pureed up on the food processor. And so now we're gonna add the rest of our liquids. And that is three quarters of a cup of our maple syrup. We're gonna put that right in there. We're gonna put in a half a cup of applesauce, which applesauce always really kind of replaces your oil when you're doing things. And you could put a little bit of coconut oil in that matter as well, which, you know, I think I will do that. I think I'm gonna put a, just a little touch of uh, some coconut oil in, probably about a tablespoon or so here. Get that in, just to give a little bit more texture and body into it. Next, we're going to put in our eggs. And our eggs, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in one egg white first. When you separate your eggs, always make sure that you place them in another bowl. Don't just separate them over your recipe, because if by chance there's any type of blood in the egg or anything else like that, you want to make sure that you don't ruin your whole recipe. Trust me, I've done that before, and it's not fun when you got to throw everything back out. So we've got that in. We're going to give that just a little bit of a pulse to incorporate that, because we're using our food processor today, which is super easy. Super easy to do with this uh, banana cake because it's just like kind of a one pot. We don't have to pull out the mixer. We don't have to pull out a whole bunch of stuff. So we have in here a cup and a half of oat flour. And all I did was take some oats and ground them down in the processor to make my flour. Very easy. So this ends up gluten free. Then, and as far as our spices, we have a teaspoon of cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. We have three quarters of a teaspoon of cream of tartar, which helps with the egg whites helps bring up a little bit of fluffiness into our cake. And also, anytime you're making anything gluten-free, always go for the arrowroot. Half a teaspoon of arrowroot will help even things out so it bakes a lot better. So we're gonna add our spices in, spices, I guess, leavening agents, whatever you wanna call them. And now we're gonna add into our flour. Very easy done. Gotta give it another pulse up. Make sure that you scrape down the sides so this way you don't get any kind of chunks or anything else like that kind of going into your batter for your cake. And next step is, give it one more pulse first. All right, the next step what we wanna do is we want to now just incorporate two beaten egg whites. And what this does, it's kind of like adding a meringue when you're going into, um, when you're making a cake. It just adds more air into your batter. So we're just going to beat, beat we're, we're just going to whip them up slightly just till they get a little bit foamy. All right. I'm going to put that right in there. There we go. We're going to blend all this back up and get it in our pan ready to bake. All right, now that that's done blended very well, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you still kind of wipe the sides down a little bit with your spatula. Get it so it's kind of make sure everything is all incorporated and blended very well. And this is my favorite thing. I have to show, share this with you. This is like a super, super old pan. I think it was made by, I don't know, Baker Secret and Duncan Hines and so forth years ago. Um, my grandmother had one of these and we used it at the bakery because it makes the cake very pretty. You can see we're gonna make but we have an indentation there, they are going to be able to put our filling and put all our fruit on top. So get a fancy pan when you're making this. It's kind of fun. But if you don't have that, just a regular 8-inch round pan is fine. You can put it in a square pan, whatever you want to do. It's going to give you probably, well, about maybe about an inch thick cake here. So we're kind of just going for a one layer thing because we're putting everything on top of it. So for right now, we are just going to spray up our pan. Get it all nice and good there. And then we are going to just pour our batter right along in there. Very easy. And this cake is going to bake at 350 degrees. And it's actually going to bake up relatively quickly. Um, probably about 15, 20 minutes. So kind of keep your eye on it. Once again, always test your center. If you're, I always use a metal skewer. If that skewer comes out clean, then you know your cake is done. But this is perfect uh, because this can be topped with anything. I mean, as you see, we're going to make a wonderful, luscious, creamy filling for it with cream cheese. Top with some toppings so everybody's going to love this celebration cake. Okay. 
the three top ways to get your puppy to learn faster. Number one, play with your puppy before you train, after you train. Number two, keep your sessions short. And number three, when you're done, let him take a little nap. That's when they remember everything you taught them. That's just another Empowered Puppy Bite. All right, while our cake is cooling, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up our luscious cream cheese filling that you're gonna love. Now you can use ricotta for this as well, maybe a little bit lemon zest in it, it tastes wonderful. But for today, we're using some cream cheese, about six ounces. I put in there about a quarter cup of uh, Greek yogurt. And you can kind of put that in for just a little smoothness if you want, and then also about a tablespoon and a half of maple syrup. So I'm just gonna whip this up right now. Guys, we are back. We've got our cake out of our pan, and it's all cooled down now. We wanna make sure that you do cool it down, especially because we're putting on our cream cheese topping. We don't want that to kind of melt into the top of our cake. So, super, super simple way of doing this is a spoon and put your cream cheese in a pastry bag. And then this way you can put a tip on it if you want to, to add just a little bit of garnish to the end of it. So we are going to basically just start up very simply, and we're just gonna go around. Now this doesn't have to be fancy in here, remember, because we're gonna be putting and layering our fruit on top of it. So what I'm gonna do is put about that much in because I wanna save the rest for any kind of little decoration we wanna do. But the back of a spoon, so much easier than a lot of times with using the spatula because the spatula a lot of times is straight. And then if you happen to have a, a cake wheel, like I do, left from a bakery that I love, uh, you can turn it very, very easy, and it's very easy to go through. And you can get right to the edge, and you don't have to do it real, real thick, because nobody wants just like a hunk of cream cheese in their mouth, except for probably the dog. The dog probably wants that very much so. So we're gonna kinda just keep going around like this, and like I said, just turn your little wheel, and it just makes it so easy for decorating. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just going to put our fruit on. And you can do whatever fruit toppings you like. I chose strawberries, whitens the dog's teeth. Kiwis, full of antioxidants, fiber, fiber for the dogs, which is fiber is always a good thing. And of course our blueberry is our wonder um, fruit that we always talk about because we always go to blueberries. The dogs love them, best thing for ever for them. So, and for you too, and the kids. So our celebration cake is coming on. We're just gonna decorate it all around here. Are we ready for Hanson to taste it? I think Hanson is ready for us to taste Look how beautiful this is, guys. Who does not love cake? I love cake. Cake is always my thing. Cake will always be my thing. So here, are you ready? Let's taste it and see. Oh my goodness. It came out absolutely gorgeous. And I think our boy loves it too. Yep, we're puppy approved. Go make one for your dog today. <laughs> is it good? Treatment for serious diseases such as cancer can cost in the tens of thousands of dollars. Having to put your pet down stinks no matter what the circumstance, but it's preferable that it be for the sake of humane treatment rather than because of medical costs or just too high. We looked into the top three pet insurance companies to learn a little bit more about their pros, cons, and what they can offer us. It is important to insure your pet before they get sick because it's unlikely that a policy will cover a pre-existing condition. Pet insurance prices are specific to the animal in question and the type of coverage you want. So the sign-up process begins with you providing information on the provider's website about the species, breed, age, basic medical history of your pet. You will then get a quote which you can adjust 
The three companies we looked at were Pets Best, the ASPCA offers a program, and Embrace. So Pets Best has a reputation for good service, which for me, a lot of what you do are dealing with it, when you're dealing with issues of your pet's health, you want someone there that's going to listen to your point of view and point you in the right direction. They have no restrictions on vet or clinics and, or specialists for that matter. And they also cover out of state expenses. So Pets Best allows you to customize your coverage so you can only pay for what you need. Our second company is the ASPCA, which they offer a health insurance plan. So what we liked about them is it is very rare for any pet insurance provider to cover pre-existing conditions. They will also cover alternative therapies and let you visit the vet of your choice. They allow you to choose between four coverage plans, which include costs such as exams, diagnostic procedures, lab tests, and x-rays. Owners of purebred pups will also appreciate the fact its coverage of hereditary and congenital diseases. Now Embrace takes a completely different approach. They're more proactive and it's ideal for pet owners with younger animals because they're going to reward you for keeping your pets healthy by granting lower deductibles at the end of each year. In addition, Embrace's reward program covers some routine care costs that aren't generally kind of covered by the other providers. Elective care like grooming and training can even be added to the Embrace policies. So Embrace is an ethical company. They donate about $2 for every policy sold to an animal charity. And you'll find and appreciate reliable claim payments, discounts for healthy pets, and they also include behavioral therapy. The ability to afford pet insurance isn't an option for many. However, there are many other organizations that can help with vet bills. Many have turned to crowdfunding, such as GoFundMe, when you need help paying for vet bills. There have been several successful campaigns that have raised money on the platform to adopt an emotional support animal or offset their pet surgery costs and much, much more. If you're a veteran with a service dog, the United States Department of Veteran Affairs will actually cover the cost of your veterinary care, along with any equipment related to the service that the dog provides. Veteran Affairs doesn't cover costs such as, you know, over-the-counter medications or even flea treatments. Care Credit is another option that can help with routine appointments to emergency situations or surgeries. The Care Credit card gives pet owners the peace of mind needed to care for the pets big and small. Now Scratch Pay allows you to apply for payment and then Scratch Pay will pay your vet immediately. So then you can choose to either pay the MAC within like 30 days or you can go over 12 to 24 months. There are various charity groups that will help. Uh, you just don't know where to turn. So if your pet is diagnosed with illness and likely to respond well to treatment, but you don't have the funds available to cover the vet bill, turn to the Brown Dog Foundation. It was created to help pets whose families aren't able to do so themselves. The Pet Fund is a nonprofit organization that aims to help pet owners pay for non-basic, non-urgent care for chronic conditions such as heart disease and cancer. So if your pet needs such care, you can receive vet bill assistance there. The Magic Bullet Fund is for those financially unprepared to pay for the dog's cancer treatment. Now this nonprofit aims to kind of close the gap. So the Magic Bullet Fund will cover from 600 to 6,000 of the pets came in cancer treatment. All depends individual situations. So when your pet gets sick or has an emergency, we have to make a decision based upon emotion. By being prepared for your what if options will help make that time a little less stressful. Training a new puppy can be an overwhelming experience. In today's fast paced society, it is hard for a person to focus long, let alone a puppy to pay attention in an hour long class. Our lifestyle puppy training lets you train your puppy on your schedule, your time, and in your home. Your puppy will learn quicker, have more fun, retain more, and it will be more enjoyable for you. Start training the day you bring your puppy home. Enroll today at EmpoweredPuppySchool.com
Stem cells are powerful healing cells in the body that can become other types of cells. There are many adult stem cells in fat tissue, however, they are asleep. Stem cell therapy allows your vet to isolate stem cells from an animal's own fat tissue, wake them up, and reintroduce the healing cells to areas of need. It offers an all-natural alternative to drugs and steroids. In a recent randomized sampling of 155 canines suffering from osteoarthritis, more than 95% showed improvements as reported by the treating veterinarian. The development of a cancer vaccine for dogs is amazing news for the canine community. The vaccine, specifically created for melanomas, is a huge step in the right direction in the fight against cancer. The vaccine uses a substance from humans called tyrosinase to elicit an immune response against the tyrosinase created by the cancerous melanoma cells. This causes the immune system to attack any melanoma cells remaining in the body after the initial surgical removal, preventing metastasis to other areas. Unlike surgical lasers that cut through tissue, therapy lasers or cold lasers stimulate the body cells to promote healing and alleviate pain. Laser therapy is a valuable pain management tool, particularly for older dogs who have arthritis and are starting to lose use of their back legs or those with compromised livers that prevent them from being able to take pain medications. In laser surgery, a highly focused laser beam can efficiently ablate, either vaporize or chip away the living tissue. Laser surgery benefits include less bleeding as it cuts the laser cauterizes, less pain, the laser beam seals nerve endings and lymphatics resulting in less bruising and pain reduced risk of infection. This is one of the unique features of the laser. It efficiently kills bacteria in its path, producing a sterilizing effect. MRI stands for Magnetic Renaissance Imaging. Unlike a traditional radiographic procedure or a CT scan, the MRI does not use ionizing radiation, so there is no harm to the dog undergoing the procedure. Most commonly, MRIs are used to diagnose problems with the brain and spinal cord after other tests fail to determine the cause of the animal's illness. Currently, there are at least eight colleges of veterinary medicine that are incorporating 3D printing technology into their programs. 3D models allow surgeons to physically hold and examine the skulls and bones in their hand. Bone and limb models can be used for more than just practicing. Like in humans, prosthetics are becoming common in veterinary medicine with even commercial companies stepping onto the 3D printing field. In December of 2014, 3D Systems announced they had successfully outfitted a dog named Derby with 3D printed prosthetics. The prosthetics enabled Derby to walk and even run freely. Richard Lichter is a name of a man you may or may not know. He's a man with a mission for dogs. His journey began on April 16, 2010, as he held his dog, Cosette, for the last time after a three-month battle with leukemia. She was an extraordinary, smart, beautiful golden retriever, but she had a life's purpose, and the reality is Richard found that out and made it a reality after her passing. As many of us do when our dogs pass, we ask why, and Richard did as well. But God granted him the ability and the compassion to be able to make a difference in other dogs' lives. Richard found Dr. Carl June, who is an immunologist and oncologist, and he made great advances in the research of leukemia. He then contacted Dr. Nicola Mason, who works at PenVet, and funded a four-year research study on leukemia for dogs. Richard felt that the medicines did not even compare to the magnitude of the disease. Through Dr. Mason's research and protocol, dogs are now surviving the disease. As Richard says, the disease has met its match. Second project that the Richard Lichter Charity Foundation works with is a project with Dr. Brittany Watson. And what that is, is it works with shelter dogs. Shelter dogs that are in the shelters, ready to be euthanized, but have curable diseases. As you see, many of these shelters and rescues, they don't have the funds to be able to take care of these dogs. However, through this program, they receive medical treatment, and then they go back to the shelters, and they're able to be adopted. This program has made such a remarkable difference as it has saved almost over 250 dogs that have all been lined up and ready to be euthanized. 
Richard's Foundation has been the invisible hand that has provided the comfort and care for these dogs. He funded the $2.7 million emergency room at Penn Vet, which Cosette's plaque is right up there for everybody to see and always remember what Richard has done. The third way that Richard Lichter Foundation has stepped up is to work with the Morris Animal Foundation. What they do is they award third-year vet students who demonstrate exceptional in leadership, shelter work, and research. Each one is given an award and a grant to further their research and their skills. With all that the Richard Lichter Charity Foundation has accomplished, one thing that stands out is he's very true to his mission statement. And that is with my with eyes, my they, will eyes be seen. they will be seen. With my voice, they will be heard. With my hands, they will know comfort. With my actions, they will be free. We are back. Um, the cake was good. Yes, <laughs> I love cake, as I have said before. Uh, it really, it really, really is a, it is. Is a good it's cake. It's nice. It's not. It's fresh. Yeah, and it's one of those things where you can put anything on top. You can do peaches on top. You can do the berries. You can do, and, and if you don't have the fresh, use frozen. Mm -hmm. um, because surprisingly enough, frozen fruit has more of a natural sweetness because it's ripened more and then they freeze oh, it. Yeah. So that's why you get a little bit more of a sweeter more taste, a more sugary it. taste, but it's not where it's added sugar as, as opposed to where, you know, sometimes when strawberries aren't in season, what they do is they go and they ripen them for you. Oh. Uh, same thing with the bananas. Bananas, they gas them. And it, there's a way that you can tell with the way that they get the brown spots um, on them if they've been gassed or if they're not. If they've got brown spots and the little stems are still green, they've been gassed. Oh. Uh, so there's different ways that, you know, they, I not know that. they make our produce so we <laughs> think it's better than it really is. Mm. But nonetheless, it's still better. All whole foods, like we said, um, you know, a little piece of that's not going to hurt the dogs. You could have done ricotta cheese. You could have done a bottle of cheese on it. Uh, the banana cake, you could turn it into a blueberry cake. I mean, it's a very, oh, very good. versatile recipe. So mm -hmm. that's why I like it so much. Um, I thought that the piece on Richard Lichter was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, that guy needs to very much be commended for the standpoint mm -hmm. of everything that he's he's done, like you said, in yeah, memory of dogs. Really and dogs a leg up. Yeah, and, I mean, and, over 250 dogs already. I think they're up to like 252 or 253 mm -hmm. or something like that at the time that we're filming this. Uh, so I think that that was really good. And really special. A, a shot for cancer? Yeah. Surprise, isn't that interesting? You know? And that, that makes you wonder how far away are we that for people? I, I, exactly. I still think, I, I still believe that there's a cure out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it's unfortunately that we live in a society where it's turned into a business. Well, we're coming into all kinds of new interesting things with the CBD oil and all right. that kind of stuff. Right. And the, and the canine vaccine for cancer. So Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Who knows? I know. You never know. So, well, once again, please send us your pictures and videos. We're going to do an episode just on different stuff like that, just of everybody's stuff that they've sent in, some Instagram stuff. So we're going to kind of make a, a, what, a dog life funny video. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, like America's Funny yeah. Video kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah. I know. Might as well. All right, guys. You have a great week. I'm Kim Pachati, Christina Borders. We'll see you next time.